Good evening and welcome to tonight's midnight service. I'd like to welcome those in church and also those who are joining us via Zoom. Uh, just like to very few notices tonight, but just like to say thank you for everybody for putting together everything there the, over the Christmas period, especially for Kelvin for all the hours he spent putting the services together, and for all the other people um, and for the crib service today that was amazing. Thank you, and for all the other people that have contributed. This evening we have uh, Rod Jones joining us and his wife Rosie. Uh, and two things reminders one don't forget social distancing so when you're moving around church make sure there's a big gap in front of you and for those that haven't joined us on a service before we have the communion in the center of church so rod will stand in the center of church and then what i'll do is i'll call up each bench at a time i'll put some um, antibacterial gel in your hands then you will go up and if you put the wafer underneath your mask and then go and sit down uh, and it's kind of a one way so you come out this way and you go back in that way uh, and again just make sure there's distance between you and somebody in front of you thank you very much and enjoy the service thank you very much for your <coughs> excuse me for your warm welcome it's lovely to be here in your beautiful church now we begin with a, a prayer of gathering and a greeting for each other so be ready to respond as on the order of service or on the screen we meet to celebrate the coming of Christ into the world. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. So grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We're going to listen to a, a hymn that takes us, as it were, to the edges of Bethlehem. It's the carol once in Royal David City.
Already today, people have looked into this crib and been reminded of all the key characters centered around the baby Christ. So a prayer to bless this crib. God our Father, on this night, your Son Jesus Christ was born of the Virgin Mary for us and for our salvation. Bless this crib, which we have prepared to celebrate his holy birth. May all who see it be strengthened in faith, receive the fullness of life he came to bring, who is alive and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The child to be born to Mary was called Yeshua, Joshua, Jesus, which means God saves. So hear the words of the angel to Joseph. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Therefore, let us seek the forgiveness of God through Jesus, the saviour of the world. Brief moment of quiet before we join in the uh, prayer of confession. God our Father, you sent your Son full of grace and truth. Please forgive us for our failure to receive him in our lives. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus our Saviour, you were born in poverty and laid in a manger. Please forgive us our greed and the rejection of your ways for us to live our lives. Christ, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Spirit of love, your servant Mary responded joyfully to your call. Please forgive us when we are hard of heart to others around us. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, and be cleansed from all your sins, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Christmas Collect and the appointed prayers for this holy night. Let us pray in the peace of this Christmas celebration that our joy in the birth of Christ will last forever. Eternal God, who made this most holy night to shine with the brightness of your one true light, bring us who have known the revelation of that light here on earth to see the radiance of your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so we listen to scripture, first of all, an Old Testament reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as men rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness 
from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the epistle reading is from Titus chapter 3, verses 4 to 7. But when the kindness and love of God our Saviour appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, who he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Saviour, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. We're going to listen to another carol, and after this carol, I invite you to stand for the reading of the Gospel. The carol is the one written by Isaac Watts, based on Psalm 98, Joy to the World. The Gospel reading is from John chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him, all men might believe. <clears throat> 
He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children not born of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Please be seated. At this time of uh, tumult and change, whether child or adult, young or old, believer or skeptic, there's something about this night that is magical, mysterious, magnificent, touching. At its heart lies a story we've known since childhood. The talk of angels and stars and exotic gifts suggests some bigger story behind simple shepherds and stables and a young couple in a crowded town. Now, modern sophisticates will laugh at the thought that anyone would think it believable, but there are a range of peculiar people across this world and through time who believe it to be a true story and that there is a back story to the Christmas story. So let me tell you that story on this night. Once upon a time, or rather before time actually, because there were clocks, there were no clocks and calendars, God was all there was. Somewhere in the middle of that time before time, God decided to make a world full of infinite variety, but with his trademark on it all, which is why we call it a universe instead of a multiverse. Some wonder if maybe God was bored or was lonely and was looking for something to do. But no, God was deeply content. God had a full and rich life filled with love. God's life was like that of a huge happy family with love given and received. Some call this life the Holy Trinity, the family of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, lover, love given, love shared and received. So God wasn't lonely or bored. In fact, there was so much love in him, it needed to overflow and it overflowed into the universe he made. He filled this lovely part of the universe that we call the earth with most astonishing things, with humpback whales that sing and skunks that stink and birds with colors that a Dulux paint chart couldn't begin to show. The list of things he made is too long to start listing here, but enough to say that when God stood back and looked at it all, God was pleased. Only something was missing. God couldn't think what it was at first, but slowly it dawned. Everything God made was interesting and gorgeous, and it all fit together very well, except there was nothing in the world that he could have a good talk with, share a common mind and spirit, share a sense of curiosity and humour. There was no one that sort of looked like him, or was in his image exactly. It was as if he had painted this huge masterpiece and then forgotten to sign it. So he got busy making his signature piece, something made in his own image, so that anyone who looked at it would know who the artist was. He had one single thing in mind at first, but as he worked, God realized that one thing all by itself wasn't quite what he wanted to say. He knew what it was like to be alone, and now that he had made the world, 
he knew what it was like to have company. And company was definitely better. So God decided to make two things instead of one, which were alike but different, and both would be reflections of him, a man and a woman who would keep him and each other company. Flesh was what he made them of, flesh and blood, a wonderful medium, extremely flexible and warm to touch. Since God, strictly speaking, was not made out of anything at all, but was pure mind, pure spirit, he was very taken with flesh and blood. Watching his two creatures stretch and yawn, laughed and run, he found to his surprise that he was more than a little envious of them. He made them, but he knew how fragile they were, yet their very breakability made them more touching to him. It was not long before God found himself falling in love with them. He liked being with them better than any of the other creatures he'd made, and he especially liked walking with them in the garden in the cool of the evening. So it almost broke God's heart when they got together behind his back and did the one thing he'd asked them not to do, and then hid from him, from him. While he searched the garden until it was way past nightfall and got dark, calling their names over and over again, things were different after that. God still loved the human creatures best of all, but the attraction was not mutual. Birds were crazy about God, especially hummingbirds. Dolphins and red squirrels couldn't get enough of him, but human beings had other things on their minds. They were busy learning how to make things, grow things, buy things, sell things, and the more they learned to do for themselves, the less they depended on God. Night after night, God threw pebbles at their windows, inviting them to go for a walk with him. But they said, sorry, we're busy. It was not long before most human beings seemed to forget all about him. You wouldn't believe the trouble this got them into. Wars, cities split down the middle between different groups. Two thirds of the world were hungry. One third was doing pretty well, thank you. God could have put a stop to it all right there, except for one thing. When he'd made human beings, he made them free. That was built into them. And even God couldn't take it back without getting rid of them. So God let them free. And it almost killed him to see what they were doing to each other. God shouted at them from the sidelines, using every means he could, including floods and famines and messengers and manna. He got inside people's dreams. And if that didn't work, he woke them up in the middle of the night, whispering in their minds. No matter what he tried, however he came up against the barriers of flesh and blood, God would say, please stop before you destroy yourselves. But all they could hear was a thunderstorm. God would say, I love you as much now as the day I made you. But all they could hear was a dog barking across a fence or leaves blowing in the trees in their front gardens. However, one of the exceptions to this sorry state were babies. While their parents were all but deaf to God's messages, babies didn't have any trouble hearing him at all. They were all the time laughing at God's jokes and crying with him when he cried, which went right over their parents' heads. Babies didn't go to war. They never made hate speeches or refused to play with each other because they belonged to different political parties. They depended on other people for everything they needed in their lives. While no one asked them their opinions about anything that mattered, almost everyone seemed to love them. And that gave God an idea. Why not make himself as one of these delightful creatures? Become one of them. He tried the idea out on his cabinet of archangels. At first they were all very quiet. Finally, the senior archangel stepped forward to speak to them all, or for them all. He told God how much they would worry about him if he did that. He would be putting himself at the mercy of his creatures. 
the angel said. People could do anything they wanted to him, and if he seriously meant to become one of them, there would be no escape if things went pear-shaped. Could he at least create himself as a magical baby, a little superhero with special powers? It wouldn't take much, just power to become invisible, or maybe or the power to hurl thunderbolts of lightning if the need arose. The baby idea was a stroke of genius, the angel said. It really was, but it lacked adequate safety features, not enough security backup. God thanked the archangels for their concern, but said no. He thought he would just be an ordinary, common or garden baby. How else could he gain the trust of his creatures? How else could he persuade them that he knew their lives inside out, unless he lived a life like theirs? There was a risk, he knew that. Actually, to be more truthful, there was a terribly high risk. But that was part of what he wanted his creatures to know. That he was willing to risk, risk everything to get close to them, in hopes that they might love him again. It was a daring plan, but once the angels saw that God was dead set on it, they broke into applause. They were moved and touched and impressed and clapped with tears of fear and wonder in their eyes. While they were still clapping, God turned round and left the cabinet chamber, shedding his robes as he left. The angels watched as his midnight blue cloak fell to the floor, so that all the stars on it collapsed in a heap. Then a strange thing happened. Where the robes had fallen, the floor melted and opened up and revealed a scrubby brown pasture speckled with sheep, and right in the middle of them a bunch of shepherds sitting around a campfire drinking wine out of leather bottles. It was hard to say who was more startled, the shepherds or the angels, but as the shepherds look up at them, the angels push their senior member to the edge of the hole. Looking down at the human beings, who were all trying to hide behind each other, the angel said in a voice as gentle as he could muster, do not be afraid. See, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the promised one, Christ the Lord. And away from the direction of the town of Bethlehem, came the sound of a newborn baby's cry. Well, just on time for Christmas Day, I'm going to light the final Advent candle, the sign that Jesus has come. Lord Jesus, light of the world, you have come among us. Help us who live by your light to shine as lights in your world. Glory to God in the highest. We're going to affirm our faith now in the words that are taken from Paul's letter to the Philippians about the humility of God coming among us. So let us stand. Let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow 
and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. We sit for our Christmas intercessions. At the end of each prayer are the words, Jesus, Saviour, to which the response is, hear our prayer. God so loved the world that he sent his only son to be the saviour of the world. On this special day, we ask that your church will not lose sight of this central truth, but that it will turn towards its saviour for all its needs. As we gather today, may Christ be born again in our church and into the lives of each person here. May the peace of Christ fill our hearts. Jesus, Saviour. Hear our prayer. As we focus on Jesus, the baby born in the stable, we ask a special blessing for all those who have birthdays at this time of year. We remember also the circumstances of his birth. And so we pray for the homeless, for the displaced, for all people who are not at home with family. Jesus, Saviour. Hear our prayer. As we focus on Christ, the Prince of Peace, we ask for peace in our world. And we pray especially for all serving men and women around the world in places of conflict, separated from families in order to defend our peace. Jesus, Saviour. Hear our prayer. As we focus on Mary, the channel through which your son Jesus came into the world, we ask a special blessing on all mothers on this day. We pray for expectant mothers, for new mothers, for bereaved mothers and for mothers who, for whatever reason, are not with their children. Jesus, Saviour. Hear our prayer. As we focus on the shepherds who took a great leap of faith by leaving their sheep and going to Bethlehem to find the newborn King. Help us all to take a leap of faith this Christmas so we can renew our belief in your love and help. Remind us at this special time that you too lived on earth as we do now and knew all of life's challenges. Jesus, Saviour. Hear our prayer. As we focus on the wise men who overcame many difficulties in search of the newborn King, we ask you to be with all those facing difficulties and uncertainties in their lives. Those who face work or family or health issues. Be with them in their need and help them to rely on you as their best source of help. Jesus, Saviour. Hear our prayer. We offer all these prayers to you in the name of your son, Jesus, mighty counsellor, Prince of Peace, Saviour of the world, who brings light into our darkness. Amen. Amen. When the holy table is being prepared, we shall listen to the carol, A Little Town of Bethlehem, seated. But before that, we acknowledge each other's presence in the peace and remember those who are greeting us, as it were, from home. So I invite you to stand for the peace. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Just acknowledge each other's presence. So I invite you to sit for the carol that we shall listen to.
So to our prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who for love of our fallen race humbled himself and this night was born of the Virgin Mary by the power of your Holy Spirit and lived among us as one of us. In this mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused his light to shine in our hearts, to give knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. In him we see our God made visible and so are caught up in the love of Almighty God. Therefore, with angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name as we join in our joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and we look for the coming of his glory, the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. So rejoicing in the presence of God here among us, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break the bread of life that our life is the light of the world. So we join in praying. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Christ is the true bread which has come down from heaven. Lord, give us this bread always. So draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Lásky. God our Father, in this holy night you have made known to us again the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Confirm our faith and fix our eyes on him until the day dawns and Christ the morning star rises in our hearts. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. So we join in praying, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to put your praise and glory. Amen. Before our blessing, uh, we hear the carol, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. It was written by Charles Wesley and adapted by George Whitfield.
After the blessing and the words of dismissal, um, I think it's a habit here to sit and just listen to some music that's been taped by your organist before we go to our warm homes. So I invite you just to stand for the blessing and the words of dismissal. May Jesus Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon each one of you and on your loved ones, near and far. May he scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes again in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, rest upon you and those you love both this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Please be seated.